Corn's a poppin'. It's time for Corn's a poppin'. So get out the butter and the salt and listen to that musical moron, Spike Jones and his city slicker. Sounds awful. I thought you fellas were going to rehearse all week. We couldn't, Mr. Jones. It rained all week. Rained? I want to make something clear to you guys. It did not rain in Los Sanglas. <laughs> you understand? It did not rain in Los Sanglas. Now pick up your instruments and let me hear you play. <laughs> That's orange juice. By the sea, by the sea, by the beautiful sea, you and me, you and me, oh, how happy we'll be. When each wave comes up, rolling in, we will sink or swim, and we'll float and play around the water, over and under, and then up for air. My switch, my switch, so now what do we care? I love to be beside your side, beside the sea, beside the seaside, by the beautiful sea. Thank you, music lovers. Tonight you'll notice that we have three experts seated at our musical round table. They're going to discuss the works of the famous composer, Peter Ilyich Tchaikovsky, <laughs> who created such beautiful music as the Romeo and Juliet Overture, which you will recognize as... like Romeo and Joliet. <laughs> and the Tchaikovsky Piano Concerto, whose melodious theme springs to mind as you hear. <laughs> and of course, there is the wonderful music of the Third Symphony. <laughs> That's the great thing about Tchaikovsky. When you've heard one thing he wrote, you've heard them all. <laughs> But now let's throw the subject open for discussion. Have any of you experts anything to say? Dr. Morgan, what do you think of Tchaikovsky? I think it's one of the finest breakfast foods on the market. <laughs> Tchaikovsky is not a breakfast food. He's a composer like Beethoven or Shostakovich. Oh, that's my favorite song. What is? Shostakovich, small by a waterfall. <laughs> Dr. Morgan, how can you account for your utter lack of knowledge about music? I've been with your band for six years. <laughs> well, as long as you have a reason. And thank you very much, Dr. Morgan. Your contribution to our discussion... <laughs> I say your contribution, Dr. Morgan, to our discussion has been practically nil. What? I said nil. Don't you know what nil is? Sure. 
When two nails get married, they have a little nil. <laughs> Dr. Morgan, sit down. I now call upon our next musical expert, Sir Frederick Gass. Oh, Mr. Jones, let's not be so formal. Uh, you may call me what all my friends call me. What's that? Baldy. <laughs> Baldy? How could you be bald if you have so much hair? I belong to a strong union. <laughs> well, Sir Frederick, have you any interesting facts about Tchaikovsky? I have, Mr. Jones. I have, Mr. Jones. <laughs> what am I doing with a skinny old thing like him? <laughs> now, let's stick to the facts. What do you know about Tchaikovsky? Well, he was born in 1840. And when he walked into the Moscow Opera House in 1902, he caused quite a sensation. Why? He died in 1893. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Frederick Gass. The third member of our panel is rather unusual. He's a child prodigy with an amazing mind. His name is George Rock. Georgie? Well, Georgie, it's good to see you. <laughs> Georgie, why did you kiss me? I always kiss my daddy when he's shaving. You're very affectionate. No, it's just that he hasn't got a razor and I've got a very sharp tongue. <laughs> Georgie, you got a wonderful head on your shoulders. Well, thank you. It's too bad your stomach hides it. <laughs> Georgie, you ought to know something about Tchaikovsky because his Nutcracker Suite is a favorite with children. Yeah, I know. When I was only six years old, I played the Nutcracker Suite entirely by ear. Oh, how did it sound? I couldn't tell. By the time I got through, my ears were full of shells. <laughs> Thank you, Pear Shape. But now it's time for us... Hello, Spike. Why, it's our lovely guest star, the glamorous Dorothy L'Amour. <laughs> Dorothy, did you hear our roundtable discussion? Yes, I did, Spike, and you have some nerve palming off those corn huskers as experts. What's wrong with my musicians? What's wrong with them? Take a look at them. Get a load of that one over there sitting there with, a, with the skinny legs and all the wrinkles on his face. Dorothy, that's my washboard. <laughs> well, it looks more intelligent than the musician. Gosh, Dorothy, I hope you haven't hurt the fellow's feelings. They were looking forward to your visit here. Jack, tell Miss L'Amour what you told me before, will you? Well, all I said, Miss L'Amour, was that I hope you'd make some more of those pictures with Bob Hope and Bing Crosby where you wore a sarong. They were wonderful. Really? Yes. It made it so easy to tell which one was the girl. One of the big musical hits of the day is a tune about some celestial cowpokes riding in a happy haunting ground. As sung by some of our better singers, and also Von Monroe. Well, here is our special Spook Jones arrangement of Ghost Riders in the Sky. An old cowpoke went riding out one dark and windy day. Upon a ridge he rested as he went along his way. You know, it went so mighty heard the red-eyed cows he saw. A plowing through the ragged skies. And a poor glory draw. P-A-P-A-E. A-P-A-E. Two, 
three. Uh, wh wh when do I come in, old timer? In this song, it don't matter, partner. Go ahead, sing. <laughs> Their faces gone, their eyes were blurred, their shirts all wet with sweat. Don't be half safe. <laughs> I didn't want to catch that hurt, but they caught him yet. Get along, little doggy. <laughs> Cause you got to ride forever on the range up in the sky. On horses snorting fire. Is that possible? How would I know? <laughs> As they ride on here, they cry. This is on the hit parade. Hoi. P A P I A. I A P I A. P A P I O. P A P I O. Marching home again, hooray, hooray. He'll make the guy who wrote the song pay and pay. Cause all we hear is ghost riders sung by Von Monroe. I can do without his singing. But I wish I had his dog. <laughs> and a host of musical morons. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education.